What we're talking about today is weather forecasts, how to get them, where to get them, and how to use them. The easiest and probably best place to get your weather information these days is probably off the internet, and there are myriads of, uh, of sources to go from. It doesn't really matter which app you use, it's just so long as you check a couple of things about the weather data that you're using. First of all, make sure that it comes from a reputable source, and secondly, make sure it's up to date. Uh, that's really important because uh, quite a few of the somewhat more dubious websites have great graphics, but, but they use data which is up to 24 hours out of date. So just be careful of that. So what I normally start off doing, I'll go and look at a synoptic chart, which is basically a weather chart to try and get a big picture. And looking at the one for, for the UK today, what we have is, a, is there's a ridge of high pressure pushing in from the, from the Atlantic up the western approaches towards the southern North Sea. And looking at that, that's forecast to give us probably a, a westerly to northwesterly flow. Um, looking at clouds and things, there's a few fronts, but they're all off to the north, so, uh, so, so nothing to really to worry us about today. It's all very well looking at forecasts. Forecasts these days are all generated by, uh, by pretty good but massive computer models. And what I've got here is the satellite images. This is again off the Met Office website. I can play through those just to see how the cloud's changing. And what we can see from here is there's a larger band of cloud uh, further to the north, which is just gradually making its way down over the country. So we might expect to see the cloud increase uh, later on this afternoon, so a little bit less sun, at least over the land. The third thing I always like to look at is, is it raining? Because it's not, okay, yes, we have water waterproofs, so that's not the problem. The thing about raining is that if you have a rain cloud, that implies that you have water falling down. And that water falling down also implies that you have air coming down around it. So generally, where you have rain clouds, you also have more squally conditions. And again, I'm bigging up the Met Office website, but for the UK, it's pretty good. On the Met Office app, you have a really good link directly to the rain radar. Quite often, you'll go say that you'll go in the water when there's a slightly marginal um, uh, weather forecast. You think, okay, it's a bit top end, but we'll, we'll be all right. The thing to do with that is, is to make sure that you look at several different sources of weather. Um, so, so as I've told you, my main go-to source is the Met Office in the UK. I'll also look at, at, um, at other other countries' forecasts for the UK. Meteo France, for example, across the channel, they do a very good forecast, um, a high resolution model, which I find particularly good for the next 24 hours. The US uh, equivalent of the Met Office also uh, puts out a forecast uh, several times a day for the entire globe, and I look at that as well. Um, if, all if, if all three of those are saying roughly the same thing, then I have good confidence in my forecast. If you do have a forecast which is a bit unreliable, you've got three different ones saying different things, don't just choose the, the one that suits you best and go with it. That's a really unsafe practice. If you have, if you have a, a forecast telling you different things, always err on the side of caution. That's by far the safest and most seaman-like thing to do uh, when you're looking at the weather, especially in the UK. The important thing about for weather forecasting is get a decent source, understand where they get their data from, look at it in the morning before you go sailing, work out how it's going to change during the day and what you can see, and then go out and have a really good time and be safe.